them with their offensive line, they're going to have to get good pressure and, and block for it, but not holding it. And a key thing, field position. The Tigers must take advantage of any field position that they get tonight. So we uh, flip our charts here. Now that we know Memphis will be on offense. Brian Davis averaging oh, about 26 yards of return. Sitting back waiting, and here's the kick from Mike Schaefer. And Davis deep in his end zone. It is windy tonight. So the Tigers will be facing the wind as they take over first town in the 20 from first down to 10 from their own 20 into the wind. It'll be a factor this evening, I guess is what I was trying to say. Look for the Tigers to come out and establish the running game. Maybe get a little bit of the speed option that worked really well for the Tigers against Michigan last week. And Bernard Oden, you see him put in the position of being a leader as a sophomore. Only the one touchdown. That was a long pass play to Boo Blevins. The fullback's the leading receiver on this team. Southwestern Louisiana likes to blitz a lot. They line up in a 4-3, and Odin gave the football up to the D-back, is what they like to call the fullback. And there is no room at all for Boo Blevins. Mario Stevens made the stop. He's the tackle on the left side of that Southwestern line. Second. And one of your keys was some pressure from that offensive line and nothing there that time. Second down and the eight. Only a pickup of two on the play. Here's how the Tigers set it up offensively with that big line. Not quite as big as southwestern Louisiana's. Ross Kelly's the man in motion. Has a little bit of room. Odin makes a sweet move. Odin has the first down and there's flags everywhere. This is a comeback. He got a clip in the back by your wide receiver. He was he was gonna not block him, but then he made the attempt to block him. And the best thing to do in that situation is just hold off on that block. Stop was made by Damon Mason. He's their strong safety. He's really been a busy guy. He's had a couple of tackles for loss this year. It's a clip against Memphis. That's the preliminary indication, and that's not good news. The young quarterback made a smart decision. He, he made a drop back pass and didn't have anything. He slid up in the pocket, had room to run, but the Tigers got a penalty on that play. Well, we have him wired, but we didn't hear it. Uh, by the way, the referees for the game tonight are a uh, split crew, and the referee there was J.C. Louderback. There's uh, the secondary of Southwestern Louisiana. Second down, 16. Oh, that's some time. And we might see a hole there, and the pass goes incomplete. He's looking for by the 20 yard line. Marvin, it looked as if he had some time, but somebody must have been holding on. He's, he's getting very good time, but he, he tried to slide up on a pocket. And it's going to be on the left. I think it's going to be on your left guard. And the officials got him for holding. And the Tigers wanted to come out. They started out at the 20, but now they're inside the 10. So it's not a very good opening for the Tigers on the first offensive drive. R.C. Louderback says it's a hold. Now this one's going backwards. It started at the 20 when Davis had to down the football thanks to a kickoff that was wind-aided deep into the end zone and then it went backwards from there seems two two crucial penalties a clip and a hold uh, driving the tigers back on this second down you you want to try to run and get your quarterback some room coming out the end zone you don't want to put him in a pressure situation where he's got to pass every time coming out second and 23 you look from the uh, end zone on the opposite side of the field the ball sitting on the seven and Oden's in trouble oh how did he get away from that Oden better get rid of it. And he does in a dangerous place, and it's picked off. Southwestern Louisiana has their second interception of the year, and it's Tim Sensley who made the pickoff. And the young quarterback, he, he's going to develop and learn. Once he gets in trouble on a play like that, he just wants to get rid of the football, throw it out of bounds, and just do the smart thing. You tried to force him, try to throw across his body, and as a quarterback, you don't want to throw across your body. And he's going to slide away from the penetration. He makes an ex excellent athletic move getting outside to contain him. 
But what he's going to try, he's going to try to make something happen, and he's got defensive pressure. And it's just a bad mistake on the young, young quarterback. Essentially, his first interception this year. Immediately, they give it to their tailback. His name is Marcus Pryor, and it goes absolutely nowhere. Brian Barnett, a man up front who had a big game against Michigan last week as well. He had seven solos and caused a fumble against those big guys. Had no problem with the big guys here from southwestern Louisiana. On that run attempt, this big line goes nowhere. They lose a yard. And that's going to be the Tigers are going to have to do some quick penetrations, and if the defense can hold southwest Louisiana to a field goal, they would have uh, dodged this bullet. Second down, 11. And here comes the rush. Oh, that defense continues to play strong. It looks like it might have been a safety blitz that time or a linebacker blitz. Cedric Miller was the man who made the play. So Southwest is trying to do some sprint action, fake to the fullback, and come right but Cedric Miller does a good job of fighting off the block and he does an excellent job of wrapping up the quarterback and the Tigers defensive line are getting great penetration against that big offensive line get of southwest Louisiana. Well, that was a neat camera angle you saw from down low that's what it looked like to Jake Delhomme as big Cedric Miller came flying in. Third down 28 either team has shown any offense so far. No blitz this time the Tigers laid back with the run that's the time. Now here they come and bottom Dan Bonner and Marvin Thomas was in his face as well. Excellent well, series for your defense. The defense saw the offense was struggling. They come out, they pin their ears back, and they do a good job against this front line. You see Dan Bonner going around the big offensive tackle, and he's going to hit the quarterback right there. Good job by the defensive line of the Tigers, and they got Southwest in a punting situation. Three plays, they lost. 25 yards, two sacks on the deal, and instead of field position, and they had that ball at the 18-yard line. They're punting, what a defensive stand. It's a weak punt, and Russ Kelly's got some room. Russ Kelly's gonna get about eight yards on that play after the short punt. So the field position is not horrible. Memphis will have it at their own 23 after the 32-yard punt. No score with 11.43 left to go in the first quarter. Close out 95. Kick off 96. 10 3 90 for a new air conditioned Mazda truck. 13 9 90 for a new Protege LX automatic loaded. 15 4 90 for a loaded new 626 LX. Hi, I'm Rip Shear, University of Memphis head football coach, inviting you to register at Homer Skeleton Mazda for the Dash for Cash. The winner will receive tickets, parking passes, and 24 seconds to grab as much cash as possible. Let her rip. Homer Skeleton Autoplex. I want to know what you think. I believe we made our great tasting brown hot dog even better. It's beefier now, juicier, spiced just the way you like it. In fact, I don't think you'll find a better tasting hot dog anywhere. But I want to know what you think. So try our new brown juicy jumbos and give me a call. Let me know if you like our new juicy jumbos as much as I do. First down, 10 at Memphis, and no room at all for Quitman Spalding that time. He got a yard and a half, that was all, and he ran right into Marion Goff. Goff knocked him straight down. He's the linebacker on the left side. His good tackle of the year. That was a good tackle. There's no penetration by that offensive line. But Quinn Spalding, he's got to see the hole. He had a little seam. That time he just missed the holes. He's, he's going to have to be quicker to the hole. Second down and nine. Six-man front now by Southwestern Louisiana. Quinn Spalding again. Nothing there again. It starts to rain a little bit here at the Liberty Bowl. Jeff Mitchell, their excellent defensive end, he's their leader, made the stop. Mitchell was around for that game against the University of Memphis down in the Bayou, and they lost 17-15, as Matt Dillon was telling us earlier. That was a game where Steve Matthews and the ball club didn't come awake until the fourth quarter. And that, that's a game the Tiger in 93 wish they could have won because that was a key, a key game for that season. Probably cost them a goal. Here's third down and seven. Southwestern Louisiana backs up. 
Howard with some time. And tried to find Chancey Carr over the middle. It would have been short of the first down anyway, right at the 30-yard line. They needed to get to the 35. Good defense that time by Britt Jackson. And so and the Tigers will have to punt the football away. First punt of the game for Mike Coughlin coming up. The Tigers punted 12 times last week, so let's hope this is not the first of 12. Coughlin's punt. Fumbled, and there's Chris Smith with the ball. Smith is, uh, I guess, the ball's either going to be ruled down here. No, he can't advance it, but Memphis has it. At the southwestern Louisiana 37-yard line, the punt was about 43 yards. A big break for the University of Memphis. And you know when there's a turnover, that means something good. River Oaks Realty donates $550 to the Tiger Athletic Department Scholarship Fund. We're back in just a minute. Why is Embassy Suites twice the hotel? First, you get a suite with two big rooms. Evening beverages are on the house, not on the bill. And our cook-to-order breakfast is free of charge. Obviously, this isn't your typical hotel. It's twice the room, twice the comfort, and twice the value. And it's only at Embassy Suites. Twice the hotel. Call 1-800-EMBASSY. Determination is the immovable object. Intensity is the irresistible force. Our mission as a football team is to display both determination and intensity. To be the animal you cannot contain and the barrier you cannot penetrate. Energy, unity, destiny. Tiger football, let her rip. For 1995 Tiger football season tickets, call 678-2331. Early in the first quarter, 10 minutes and 15 seconds, Memphis's offense has had uh, the ball a couple of times, not been able to move it. Their defense was marvelous, and their special teams has just come up with a big play. And on that play, I think that was number eight, Chad Arnaud, who is uh, starting uh, cornerback on the defense and playing special teams that had to be carried off. You hate to see anybody leave on a cart, don't you? Mm. And that's one thing about football. You're going to have injuries, but you just hope the young man can come back and have a productive season. From the 37-yard line of Southwestern Louisiana, first down and 10. Oh, gives the ball straight ahead. This is Chris Reeves. Reeves, his second carry as a University of Memphis Tiger, and he drags five guys all the way to the 22-yard line. That's a pickup of 15 yards and a first down, and Damon Manson finally uh, stopped him. It's the base place of the option, and any struggling offense, what you want, you want to have a come out and get a good run. And Chris Reed, he, all he's doing is just playing power football and churning those big legs, and that's going to get the uh, offensive line confidence up, and they want to run the football tonight. Reeves, the sophomore from Thomaston, Georgia. That was impressive. in trouble. I don't know how he gets away. He's still on his feet. Finally throws it. He's got his man, Ross Kelly. Ross Kelly gets it to the three. What a play by Odin and by Ross Kelly. Week in, week out, we talk about this young man, athletic ability. There he escapes the sacks and and he's got this frame of mind of a veteran quarterback, and he's always got, that's another, at three missed tackles by Southwest Louisiana, and he's still got his eyes up, and the good thing about this, Ross Kelly works his way back to his quarterback, and then he cuts down inside, so this is what the Tigers need to get the offensive scheme going and getting confidence. First down and goal, Levin's in the game, three backs are in, Odin's going to keep. Odin's got it! Touchdown, Memphis! play outstanding play by the young, young quarterback he saw the read on a defensive end he cut it back in excellent play and the Tigers get a touchdown and 
into the first quarter of the game, you'll see he's going to take the option to the short side of the field. There he slips the tackle, and he has the strength and ability to get inside. This, this young man, every week he comes out, he plays with a lot of heart and a lot of determination, and that touchdown is something the offensive Tigers needed. Paramore, two for two on extra points this year. Missed that one. But the offense scores for the first time in the first half this year. Thanks to a big special teams play and then some incredible athletic ability by Bernard Oden, they lead 6-zip. If you're thinking of selling your home, there's one important thing you should know. There are more than 8,000 homes for sale right now in Memphis and Shelby County. And just one little symbol that can keep your home listing from being lost in that crowd. The River Oaks 10K symbol on your for sale sign tells every realtor in the Memphis area that River Oaks offers a $10,000 bonus opportunity if they sell your home faster. And when your house moves faster, so can you. Ask River Oaks about our 10K plan today. I want to know what you think. I believe we've made our great tasting brown hot dog even better. It's beefier now, juicier, spiced just the way you like it. In fact, I don't think you'll find a better tasting hot dog anywhere. But I want to know what you think. So try our new brown juicy jumbos and give me a call. Let me know if you like our new juicy jumbos as much as I do. Memphis draws blood first. They lead 6-0 over the Raging Cajuns of southwestern Louisiana. There's been a couple of plays, Marvin Cox, that Bernard Oden has made. It, it, it appeared he was going to have us get caught with a safety. I don't know how he got away from all these guys to hit Ross Kelly. He's just something to watch. An inside kick. And Memphis touched it, but they couldn't hold it. And not a, not a bad call by Coach Sure. You come out, you score, and you want to throw a little wrinkle into it. The Tigers had an opportunity, and you got to feel, feel that ball, but Southwest Louisiana is going to get the ball in pretty good field position. Now yeah, they don't want to take the penalty. That's exactly what... Uh, Greg Baker is trying to tell Nelson Stokely they'd rather take the position because Memphis knocked that ball out of bounds at about the southwestern Louisiana 48-yard line. That's where they're going to get it. That's the smart move. It's actually at the 47. Well, that was so close to being a terrific onside kick. Here's the scoring drive for Memphis. Four plays, 37 yards. It only took a minute 10 after they got that muff punt. The Tigers defense can come out now and play just good, aggressive defense with that lead they have right now. They tail back, can't get outside. That's the second time they've tried to move Marcus Pryor, their best running back. He had 100 yards coming into the game, and he could not get past Dan Bonner. And Southwest Louisiana is going to try to run uh, lateral against the Tigers, but you can't. They're, they're, they're too quick and you're going to see a pitch to the left and he's going to try to sweep it and Jesse Allen makes a good uh, makes a good job right there of turning him in and then his defensive buddies come and help out on the, on the tackle. Allen, the leading tackler a year ago, hasn't had as many tackles this year. The top tacklers are the DBs. The three best tacklers on Memphis are all in the defensive back group and Allen makes things happen. This time the fullback straight up the middle on a dive does get some penetration. That was Kenyon Cotton. It'll be third and long coming up. Let's go downstairs and uh, talk to our buddy Matt Dillon. It's not good news for the Raging Cajuns. Chad Arnod, the redshirt freshman in the secondary, Dave, torn ACL. He is through, will not be back tonight. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, you knew it was bad when they carted him off. I hate to see the ACL. That means you're going for the year. Third down, actually not so far. It's only four yards. The one with a lot of time his man and then he got rocked at the Memphis 41. Catch was made by the tight end Cody Ramiro and then uh, Tiger came over and really laid a lick. And Jeff DeLong is a very good quarterback. He, he's going to make the smart play. He's going to find out who's open and he's going to try to 
to get the ball to the man that's wide open and get the ball downfield. He went to his tight end on, on that play. And look for him to try to find Donald Richard, a young receiver who has very good hands and had 41 catches on last year. Deron Sutton, who uh, is seeing some starting time now, made the big hit there, but not before the first attendant took a look at our no boy very much on his face. That's it. And his movement on the left side of the line, it looked like the left like guard line. moved. I think it was Keno Hills who made a stutter step, and that'll bounce Southwestern back five yards. Anytime you have an injury to your ACL, you know you're going to have to. And we take a look at the illegal procedure. It looks like it's going to be the left tackle that jumps early. But getting back to the injury, anytime you have an injury to your ACL, you can look out, look to be out a year. So hopefully, the young man, he can be proud and. Once he has his surgery, he can get get out and get his rehab and get back healthy. Oddly enough, what your big injury was a leg. It was not. It was a broken leg, which is probably easier to come back than any of the joints, right? No, it was the same thing. Oh, with ACL. Okay. Good job by the Tigers of spinning that out. Again, Pryor can't find the way outside. Again, Duran Sutton coming over. And Sutton has beaten out Kevin Cobb for that starting position. And Cobb's not having a bad year. His brother Keith Cobb, who's a backup, is having a great year. And what the Tigers secondary are doing, once they notice Duran, they're coming right up going through any tackles. And there you see Duran Sutton, and you'll see Jerome Woods come in and finish him up. Second down and 14. I think they've only had two plays that have had positive mark, uh, yardage. And the Tigers are, are still playing the aggressive defense. And once the Tigers' offense start clicking on their new system, you look about the fourth game to start clicking on your offense. But they're doing a good job. The Tigers blitz that time. Almost paid the price, but no. The tight end, Cody Romero, could not hold on again. And the Tigers get the break. Sutton again in on the play. They, they uh, blitzed. I think it was Hogan's who came over from the middle linebacker, slid to the left side and came in. I, I think Memphis is blitzing a little more tonight. And, and what they're doing, they're, get, they're getting their speed guys going. You're seeing numbers like Dan Bonner, Jesse Allen, and Ricky Hogan's coming out against Mississippi State. They came out kind of slow, but now they found their niche and the, the defense is really gelling. They're, they're throwing little blitz schemes that Southwest Louisiana and Jake DeLong has got to come up and read those blitzes and go to the proper man who's open. DeLong had 222 yards passing a couple of years ago. Here's a drop play. And Kenyon Cotton comes very close. He'll be short about five or six yards, though. It was Cedric Miller, the linebacker on the right side, who came up and made the stop at the Memphis 36-yard line. The wind is behind the Raging Cajuns, but they're electing to punt nonetheless. Another good job by your Tigers defense. Mike Jones standing at the 50-yard line. Ross Kelly back at the 10. They tried to pooch punt earlier in the game, and they didn't do a very good job of it. This time he hangs it high for the corner, and Ross Kelly calls for the fair catch. It goes into the end zone, and Memphis will have it first and 10 from their own 20 with 5.52 to go in the first quarter and a 6-0 lead. We take a quick timeout. We're back. We'll see if Memphis's offense can keep the thing going. Close out 95. Kick off 96. 10 390 for a new air conditioned Mazda truck. 13 990 for a new Protege LX automatic loaded. 15 490 for a loaded new 626 LX. Hi, I'm Rip Shearer, University of Memphis head football coach, inviting you to register at Homer Skelton Mazda for the Dash for Cash. The winner will receive tickets, parking passes, and 24 seconds to grab as much cash as possible. Let her rip. Homer Skelton Autoplex. Why is Embassy Suites twice the hotel? First, you get a suite with two big rooms. Evening beverages are on the house, not on the bill. And our cook-to-order breakfast is free of charge. Obviously, this isn't your typical hotel. It's twice the room, twice the comfort, and twice the value. And it's only at Embassy Suites. Twice the hotel. Call 1-800-EMBASSY. Welcome back to the Liberty Bowl. Dave Voloshin, Marvin Cox, Matt Dillon. Tigers with a ball and the lead. A little pass midway in the first quarter, straight up the middle. There's nothing there. That defensive line closed in 
And in a hurry, Paul Campbell, they're a very, very fine tackle. He's another guy who's been around a while for this team. Made the stop. He's a junior from, uh, I love the names in Louisiana, Funky Louisiana. There's a Bow Bridge, a couple of players from Bow Bridge. La Place. Can't beat it. Be a good place to go get some gumbo. In the meantime, not much at all. Only two yards on that last run. Second down and eight. Odin in the flat. And Spalding's got some room. Spalding hands the first down. Knocked that up. Well, I think he's got the first down. We'll see where they spot it. He does. Goff, the linebacker on the left side, made the stop. And that, of course, Spalding does come up with a nine-yard play. You know, Quitman played so well against Mississippi State. He was totally stymied by Michigan. Not, not really was it to, to put the blame on him. Truth is, there was no help from the there was, offensive there was line. No, there was no, no room to run. That uh, Michigan defensive line did an excellent job, and the Tigers just couldn't block the defensive line this last is, week of Michigan. This is first and ten. Two split line on the right. Three on the play. That was bounced in to Ryan Ross Kelly. Almost sensed that that was an audible call by Bernard Odin there. It was a two or three step drop. He saw something he liked but couldn't get the ball there with the timing cut. And look for the Tigers to attack this Southwest Louisiana secondary. They have only one returning starter and that's Brent Jackson. So it would be interesting to see if the Tigers are going to try to move the ball downfield and get it into the hands of Ross Kelly and Chancey Carr. Two young men just had one catch apiece last week against Michigan. So as a receiver you want the football for it will be interesting to see if the Tigers can get the ball downfield. Odin again may be checking off, second down and ten. On the option. Frankie Fletcher in the game. Dives forward for a couple, but not as much as Memphis would have liked. Only two or three. And there's a flag on the play. We'll see what that's all about. The stop was made by a young man we're talking a lot about tonight, Damon Mason. And the defensive line of Southwest Louisiana is the most experienced defensive line they had in a long time and the linebackers and secretary secondary are not are not veteran guys look like we got a hold on the tigers so look like they're going to take the tigers back that'll be the second hold in this game against memphis they've been very good again with penalties in the first two games this is their third or fourth penalty already in this game and we've still got about five minutes to go in the first quarter and one thing coach sure spoke about was not turning over the football. Nelson Stokely makes a wise move here. Turns it down to only give Odin one play. So third down and eight. At the 33, there's the numbers on Odin. He had run in for one touchdown. To go with all those other offensive stats, you see. There's, nobody saw it. Now finally they do make contact. The tight end, Pesky. Yeah, I, I, I thought there was movement by the right side. I wasn't sure if it was Pesky or the tackle, but it was the tight end. And so this is going to be, instead of third and eight, third and 13. And it's a dead ball fall. He's going to take that one. Smart play by the coach. To. coach. The Tiger offense has done an e excellent job. And as your tight end, he can look in at the football and he knows the snap, snap count. So there's really no excuse for your tight end to raise up like that. Brian Powell has just come in the game. He's given the play to Odin. Powell splits out on the right side. One back set with the three receivers. And Odin's going long. Complete. He was looking for Boo Blevins. He had Blevins set up in a slot. A good defense by the linebacker Chuck Woodall, who stayed with Blevins step for step. And there's not many linebackers who will stay with that guy. He's, he's a big receiver. He has very soft hands, but your young quarterback, he really threw into double coverage on that play. So you, you want to stand to the pocket and survey the field. He went into double coverage. Could have came to the right-hand side of the field. He had one guy single covers, but he's going to learn that as he continues to play the game. Coughlin's first punt was muffed by Southwestern. This one high in the air, great hang time, and great coverage again by the special teams. Greg Hamilton. Tried 
tried to make something happen, but could not. So the Tigers have backed up from southwestern Louisiana to the 38-yard line. Considering they were backed up and kicking into the wind, that was a pretty good punt by Mike Cogler. Excellent job. And one, one thing that the Tigers have done tonight, they play well defensively, and now special teams is really playing well. Kevin Cobb. Playing defense. Win brother Keith from Cleveland, Tennessee, done a good job with just sophomores. Nice to have them around for a couple of more years. First and ten, here's Fire again. There's just nothing for that young guy in the middle. They, they try to let him make plays. They give misdirection to the fullback. He's been the only one successful so far. They've got Friar's number. And with Brian Barlett and Tony Williams anchoring that defensive line.